Hey, my name is Wendy Begno. I'm from beautiful Lafayette, Louisiana, and I am here to talk with y'all about some gluten-free baking. And we are gonna make a gluten-free shortcake with delicious Louisiana strawberries that are raised in a meat Louisiana. You can also get them raised from Ponchatoula. So to make a gluten-free baking, you're gonna have to make some substitutions from wheat flour to a flour that doesn't have wheat, barley, or rye. Wheat, barley, and rye all contain the protein gluten, which is what kills everybody who has a gluten sensitivity or allergy or celiac disease. And, um, and so a lot of times you may have a friend who says, oh, I can't eat wheat. And they look very sad because they want a piece of cake, but they don't want to get very sick, which is what a gluten sensitivity causes. So now you'll have an option when your gluten-free friend comes over, you can say, don't worry, I got something for you. And that's what we're going to do today. It's very easy. So we are going to start with two sticks of butter. It's unsalted butter and it is a little cool. It's a, just above, I mean, just below room temperature. And, um, you know, there's not a lot I can say about unsalted butter. And then this is a flour blend. It is potato starch, tapioca flour, and rice flour. And I'll have the um, information for the breakdown of the percentages, it's easy to make. But if you're making any kind of cake or muffin, this is the flour blend you wanna use because it's a light flour. Um, a lot of times gluten-free flours can be very heavy or they can cause cakiness or uh, gumminess when you bake with them. So this is a really good substitution when you're doing things that you need that lightness in. So I'm gonna add that to the butter. And then I'm gonna add regular sugar, straight in with that. And then I have a little bit of salt and then I have milk powder. And milk powder, like your grandmother may have had that during the war when they couldn't get fresh milk, or you may see it in the grocery store or you know, by the baby food. If you add a teaspoon of milk powder to your recipes when you're baking, it does amazing and incredible things to soften the crumb structure and to develop that flavor. So it's a great thing to add um, to any any baked good, really. It really, it's sort of the unsung hero that professional bakers use, but regular home bakers don't. This is xanthan gum, which uh, I'm adding to. Xanthan gum is a binder and it is what we use in place of gluten. Um, it helps to keep the whole thing together and keep your cake soft. And then this is baking powder. And the thing with baking powder and gluten-free bakes in general is that for some reason, I don't know if it's just the heaviness of the flour, but I tend to add an extra teaspoon of baking powder in a recipe when, um, per, per batch. So this called for four teaspoons from the recipe I used to convert. And then I added that extra teaspoon because you just need a little extra lift. And sometimes these flours, especially because we're using potato starch, is heavier and it needs a little extra oomph. And um, so before I mix this, I do need to tell you about potato starch. Because if you go to the store and you wanna make this recipe and you see potato flour and potato starch. They are not the same thing. And if you put potato flour in a cake mix, you're gonna end up with a very bizarre mashed potato disaster. It's terrible, don't do that. So get potato starch. Now, tapioca flour and tapioca starch, same thing. I don't know who to write to get that fixed. I don't know if Congress takes care of that, but we need to get that fixed. So. Now we're going to go in with a, uh, and look, I can show you, this is just like this. We're going to go in with just a um, beater and don't start on high. Otherwise you'll be flinging flour everywhere. And I like to turn my bowl as I mix. That way everything gets broken down quickly. And what we're doing is we're adding, it's sort of like rubbing the butter in to the flour. You can do this by hand. Uh, I have no patience, so I always use a mixer. 
and it should come out like this. It's just sort of crumbly and, you know, softly combined. Okay, now we're going to take a cup of milk and I've got a little more than two teaspoons of vanilla that we're going to add to that and we'll use the rest of the vanilla in a minute. And this is six egg whites. So we'll add that all together. Now, if, if you don't have a cup like this, get a cup like this because you can warm things in it and you can also take your mixer and go in there because we need to get the milk and the eggs incorporated a little bit before we add it. So see, you're not dirtying a bunch of stuff. It's very easy. Now we're going to add half of that. And we're going to turn, turn, turn. And when it starts to, I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit. But, okay. This mix is starting to look kind of shiny and coming together. Before that, it was still very broken looking. So you want it to really start to come together. And we'll turn our little beater back on low and add the rest of the milk. And keep it on low until you really get it, the milk incorporated. Otherwise, you will find your kitchen covered in milk, which I have done too, and that is not a lot of fun to clean up. Now we're gonna go on high. You'll see some little dots of flour. Don't worry about that. It's not, it's really not a problem. So turn your beater. I've got mine on like three quarters. And it doesn't take long. You just want it to look fluffy. And I'll show you. We are almost there. Okay. So you can see that is a pretty fluffy ooh, looking batter. Very light. That's it. So now I have a metal pan that has parchment in it and I did not listen to my husband and I did not cut the side so that it fits perfectly because he is an engineer and I'm not. It's all good. So, but it is sprayed with a little avocado oil, which is what I like to use. Smells better than the soy products. Okay. Now we're going to spread this batter out so that it is level in this pan. Do not skip this step. Some of you will be like, I don't know, I don't want to do all. Do this, otherwise your cake is going to look like a skateboard ramp. And people are going to say, what happened? All right. I have the oven going at 360 degrees. We're going to put this in there for about 20, 25 minutes, and then we'll have cake. It's as easy as that. Okay, so we put a rectangular cake in the oven, and look, a round one came out. It's a miracle. It's a miracle of modern science. So. The reason we did that was so I would have one that is cool. If you bake your cake and then take it out of the oven and go to serve it right away, do not cut it with a ring like I'm going to do because it will just come apart and be a mess on the side. You got to have a cold cake to be able to do that. When I say cold, it should go in the fridge at least for about 30 minutes after it cools to room temperature and you could even put it in your um, freezer for 15 or 20 minutes to get it really cold if you want a super straight, super clean cut like you see people do on um, TV, probably not here, but fancy people. And I'm gonna take a ring cutter and I'm gonna cut, and look, I'm gonna set this to the side. And here's one, two, and then three. Okay, now take your paring knife and just cut right down the center. Okay, there's the center, and you can see the structure of that cake is very soft. It's open. 
and we are going to just sort of ca casually, why not casually, circle these in the bottom of this salad bowl that we are using as a dessert bowl. Now, earlier I cut up a pound of strawberries and they have been macerating in um, honeysuckle syrup that is made for me uh, by a local farmer. And, but not, I mean, I think I used a teaspoon of honeysuckle syrup, a tiny, tiny bit of salt, which you should always add salt to something that's sweet because it's going to bring out the sweetness in the right way and it's going to balance that flavor back so it's not so sweet. If you don't put salt in a cake or in icing or really anything that's sweet, all you're going to taste in whatever you have made that's got butter and sugar, you're going to pretty much only taste butter and sugar. Salt is what's going to unite everything together. Same thing goes if you want to add lemon or something like that. So add salt. So I'm going to take a spatula and here's my berries and you can see that I haven't done anything but they've gotten juicy so I'm going to just press them a little bit and I'm going to put a little bit of syrup on the bottom. Not a whole lot because I don't want it to be wet. And then we'll put the strawberries. We'll throw some on the counter maybe. It's all good. Okay. These are beautiful and they smell incredible. I have to look up who the farmer was in a meat that did this and send him a Christmas card because believe me, he earned it. Okay, so we've got that. I have one disc from the other one left. So I'm gonna put that one there. And then I'm going to cut some more. Okay, now we have a little bit of a conundrum because I have the skeleton pieces. Well, sometimes what you do is cut this first and then just go in and make another. And this one find the round side and put it like that and nobody will know. Nobody's inspecting your uh, dessert to see if every perfect ring is ringing. It's all good. Okay, so now we'll put the rest of our cake on here. Kamsa. Kamsa means like that. And I'm going to put the rest of the berries Okay. Yum. Okay. And I have more berries. I think I'm going to cut some more berries just to add a little bit more. When you go to cut your berry, these have been dried and washed. Make sure they're dry. Otherwise, it'll change the flavor if you're adding anything. So just like that. And then cut extras because we don't want to skimp. If you come to South Louisiana and you eat, we make sure you have plenty. It hurts our soul a little bit if we don't feed you enough. So we, you, I don't know any time anyone here has walked away and said, I didn't get enough food. We always have a little extra for you, a little lawn yap, not land yap. If somebody says land yap, tell them to call me. That's not right, it's lawn yap. Okay, so I think we have enough. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Now, if you get to this point and you are like, we're having dessert tonight. Okay. Don't go any further. And you're probably wondering, where's the, the uh, whipped cream? We're about to do the whipped cream, but you do that right before you serve your berries. Otherwise, your whipped cream um, will definitely You'll whip it up and then you'll go and take it out of your fridge and it will completely be soft and yucky and you will be sad and fussing at me. So to avoid all that, about five minutes before you serve your dessert, go in the kitchen. This is heavy cream in a cold bowl. I added a tiny bit of salt like we talked about earlier. That's about a teaspoon of vanilla. I did not add sugar to this. 
because the berries are sweet, the cake is sweet, and we want a balanced dish. And if you add sweet on sweet on sweet, it doesn't, you just, you lose that delicious berry flavor. And there should be a sweetness, but also a little bit of bear, uh, sourness on the back end of the strawberries. You can also do this with an immersion blender. You just throw your heavy cream in a um, like a, a, a go cup or a throw cup if you're from Louisiana. If you're not from Louisiana, that's a plastic cup that you would get somewhere. We get them at parades. We all change our uh, cups out every year, whatever parade we went to. Okay, so this whipped cream, that's it. Okay. So now it's a soft whipped cream. It's not going to really hold a heavy peak or anything because you just want to layer that right across the top. Look at that. Yum. Okay. Now, if you were going to serve this and you kind of want to bring it out to your table and you're like, what can I garnish it with? Garnish it with your berries. There you go. And that is Louisiana strawberry shortcake made gluten free. Very easy, very quick. Uh, it should take you about 30 minutes maybe 45 at the most and that includes the baking time of the cake which is about 25 to 30 minutes so easy simple desserts they really uh, hit all those things that we miss when we're gluten-free and this is a great way to help your friends feel like they're part of it and um, to try a dessert that's delicious that just happens to not have any gluten that's it <laughs>